Welcome to the Virtual Pathfinder channel. In this video I will have a look at an atmospheric dispersion corrector. I will explain what it's used for and I will test how effective it is. Before we start I want to remind you if you're interested in astrophotography and astronomy remember to subscribe to this channel. In short, the problem to solve is the separation of colors when imaging celestial objects near the horizon. The atmosphere acts like a huge prism which refracts light differently depending on wavelength. When the light from an object enters the atmosphere it is refracted according to Snell's law where the index of refraction differs depending on wavelength. Typically blue light is more refracted than red light. As a result there is color fringing in the vertical direction, especially when the distance through the atmosphere becomes long, which is the case near the horizon. This angular separation of colors becomes more and more visible for elevations below 60 degrees over the horizon. As a consequence, imaged objects will have color fringing in the vertical direction near high contrast edges as well as blurring out of colors in low contrast areas, which makes focus softer with less visible details. It is a kind of chromatic aberration, but it's not the same as for spherical glass lenses since it is fringing only in the vertical direction, very much like when colors are separated in a prism. The amount of chromatic aberration or dispersion varies depending on the position in the sky. When the light from an object in space reaches the Earth's atmosphere it's refracted in a way that the angle of refraction is smaller than the angle of incidence since the atmosphere is more dense than space. That means that celestial objects appear to be higher up in the sky than they actually are with the exception of the zenith position. As mentioned, the blue light is more refracted than red which creates an angular separation of the colors. If the light from a planet is separated into a red, green and blue image, the blue image appears slightly higher in the sky than the green and the red will be lower. Since the actual position of the observed object is lower than it appears in the sky, the downwards direction is closer to the actual position of the object and less refracted, while the upward direction is more refracted and further away from the actual position. As mentioned, blue light is more refracted than red, which means that the blue light is shifted to a position higher than green and red. As a consequence, there will be blue fringing at the top of high contrast areas and red fringes at the bottom, which is typically the case when imaging planets low in the sky. I will show some examples of that later. The atmospheric dispersion corrector realigns the separated colors so that all the colors from one point of the imaged object converge to one point on the focal plane. It does so by creating the opposite effect of the atmosphere using two prisms rotated symmetrically opposite to each other relative the horizontal plane. By doing so, the combined dispersion power of the prisms can be adjusted in the vertical direction so that they cancel out the atmospheric dispersion. The vertical dispersion power of the combined prisms is adjusted by changing the thickness and angle of the glass, which is possible by rotating them symmetrically. At the optimal position the red, green and blue will coincide when the light reaches the image sensor or the eyepiece. Then the color fringing will disappear and the contrast in the middle of the image will be improved since the colors are not blurred out. A certain prism alignment cancelling out atmospheric dispersion needs to be readjusted in case the observed object moves a few degrees higher or lower in the sky. At the neutral position the levers are both at zero degrees and at the maximum correction the levers are at plus and minus 90 degrees from the start position, that is 180 degrees apart. 
Here is an example of an image of Jupiter created from a short video clip shot low in the sky through a telescope. It is processed quite a lot, but there is still some blue at the top and slightly red at the bottom. I also think the details on the surface are blurred out to some extent by the atmospheric dispersion. I hope to shoot a similar video clip using the atmospheric dispersion corrector and compare the results. Here is another image of Jupiter with its Galilean moons. And these high contrast objects all display the color fringing caused by the color separation in the atmosphere. The atmospheric dispersion corrector came well packaged in a small box, but there were no instruction manual included, which is a bit strange I think. It would have been good if it was just a small folded paper included, especially considering that the price for this product is almost the same as a typical camera lens, but that isn't a big problem since information can easily be found on various places on the internet and it's very easy to use. There is a spirit level to make the horizontal alignment of the atmospheric dispersion corrector. The prisms are rotated with two small levers that should be moved in an equal amount in the opposite directions relative to the horizontal plane. There they can be locked into position by tightening the levers as screws. The atmospheric dispersion corrector can be attached to a one and a quarter inch tube at the front end using a nose piece. The back end also allows a one and a quarter inch tube to be attached. There is also T-thread attachment on both sides. I measure the total weight of all parts to be 130 grams, which is quite light. The atmospheric dispersion corrector works best using optics with F number larger than 10 or 15. That means that the incoming light rays are almost parallel to the optical axis and easier to adjust. Just as for camera lenses, chromatic aberration is easier to handle for small apertures or long focal lengths. For telescopes with low F numbers, for instance F6, the F number can be doubled by using a 2 times Barlow, then the F number becomes 12. If configured with Barlow, the atmospheric dispersion corrector should be between the camera and the Barlow lens. In my test I used a Celestron C90 Mach telescope which has an F number 14, therefore I didn't need to use a Barlow. There is one reason for not using too high magnification, that is because each adjustment of the prism makes the image move quite a lot in the vertical direction. The object will move out of sight each time if the magnification is too high. When I made small adjustment of the atmospheric dispersion corrector it moved slightly in the vertical direction but remained in view without the need to readjust the telescope. There is a risk the image deteriorates slightly when the optical path is shifted away from the optical axis of the telescope but I think that is a smaller problem. If a planet is centered in the telescope it will move away from the center if the atmospheric dispersion corrector is used. And if the telescope then is moved to center the object, it will no longer be on the optical axis of the telescope. It will be then located near the upper or lower end. In most optical designs, the image quality is best on the optical axis, and it usually deteriorates towards the edges. That problem is limited when the F number is 10 or higher since the field of view is limited and the light rays are almost parallel to the optical axis. The test in this video was performed last Friday. I was having a sandwich in my kitchen when I suddenly saw Jupiter through the window. There were clouds approaching so I quickly assembled the rig. Jupiter was low in the sky, just over a rooftop and it was soon disappearing behind a chimney. Unfortunately, 
There were thin clouds in front of Jupiter, so I could not see the Galilean moons, which I usually do, and there were no visible details on the planet's surface, but it was possible to see the fringing of the light along the periphery of the planet. It had the typical blue fringe at the top and red at the bottom when the prisms were at the neutral position. Then I made a trial and error adjustment of the prisms until the color fringing disappeared. How much the atmospheric dispersion corrector improves the resolution of details wasn't possible to determine due to the thin clouds in the line of sight. My initial conclusion is that it seems to work, but I need a bit better viewing conditions to tell how much more details are visible when using the atmospheric dispersion corrector. I will make a new test whenever the skies allows it, but so far I think it looks really promising. That was all for now, thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe to this channel, I will be back with a follow up to this video as soon as possible. Until then, have a nice week. Oh, 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 oh,